After eight years of suffering, Catherine Mansfield became convinced that her tubercular condition was the result of spiritual impurity. <laughs> On her return to London in 1922, she attended a series of lectures given by Uspensky, a disciple of Gurdjieff. Now, the essence of both men's teachings was that man <laughs> is a machine which alone among the animal world has the capacity of becoming a fully conscious being. Now, if I express this awkwardly, it is because I was unable to follow Catherine into this region of proposed spiritual regeneration. On the other hand, I had no faith of my own to offer her. Finally, in the autumn of 1922, she asked to be admitted on a trial basis to the Gurdjieff Institute for the Harmonious Development of Man at Fontainebleau near Paris. On entering the institute, she gave up writing entirely. These rugs will decorate the theater for our Russian Christmas. What about our English Christmas? Now that is before, yes? You will invite us all to your plum pudding? I will. A wood, will you call it a cavior, my brother? Da, da. And the cavri, the luts, the cachemi, the ishi, the luts, me. Me ajin, me pa hoshnu dragoi. Kash de shof. Это молитва. Which stitch is a prayer? Произнесённая простыми людьми. Made by simple people. Которые верли. Who believe? Что сделаны ими ковёр? That the rug they make. Это живая вещь. Is a living thing. Они говорят нам о целостности и единстве. Speak to us of unity and wholeness. А я ни один рисунок не повторяет другого. No pattern is the same. I heard a barota raya. And this is the gate of heaven. Is got a vitili a sovereka mogut urazit svayi individualis. What is the time? It is early. Katori chas. Yesho rana. Arasho. I would like to speak Russian with you. Я хочу говорить с по-русски. Нет, я хочу говорить с вами по-русски. Я хочу говорить с вами по-русски. Хорошо. We will stop now. Russian is so much more difficult than French. I learned French so easily. But you learned it when you was young. Yes. Everything's harder to come by now. And such a leap into the dark. Coming to the Institute was. This really is a revolution for me, Olga. It is for all of us. Trying to live by what I believe in, and not as I have all my life up till now, live one way and think another. I told my husband I really could not go on pretending to be one person and being another anymore. He has never come to the Institute? He will. He's coming. I've asked him to. Will he like us, do you think? Part of him will. He thinks I've moved away from him. Is he that I haven't? I was a frail half-creature who migrated towards sofas. <laughs> That's all he's really known of me these last years. But now, oh, I can see how we will live one day. So happily, so splendidly. <laughs> Will you write again, do you think? I want to. But differently, more steadily. Only when I'm whole. It's not writing as writing that needs criticism and correction, Olga. So much as the mind and character of the writer. One must become more to write better. Then, perhaps... How glorious it would be. 
then I could write, not as did the late lamented Catherine Mansfield, but in a new way, a new pattern, a growing and a generous pattern. In it, the commonplace virtues would become as attractive as ordinarily the vices are made to be. The good would be the witty, the evil would be the dull. Everything I've written so far has been too hectic, too harsh, too ironic, too unmerciful. Not whole. Fatal division, disunity. Too sweet, too sour. So never quite true. like a dream. Yes, it is progressing. Mm. When have you seen such butterflies? In my mind. I think I will put a uh, hippopotamus mm. on this uh, branch here. <laughs> what do you think? Will it balance? Oh, it, it will hold tight. <laughs> <laughs> Are we too much like children playing here, do you think? Yes, working children. What is so very adult about working as a neurotic machine in the outside world? Oh, I painted before. I, I was a professional. But each day I ask myself, for who do I paint? And always the same terrible answer for me. Yes, me. I I felt like a like a spinning spider in an empty house. But for who was this web? Always me. I thought I was the spider, but really I was the fly too. Struggling, choking, and I was lucky after all. I I was an artist. But how much more the struggle for the person making mass production articles on a conveyor belt. But here, everything is made for each other. To peel a potato is an act of communal absolution. Yes? I begin to believe it is. You will, you will. Mr. Gurdjieff soon dismisses the false pretenders. I shall ask him if I can sleep here. Do you think he will let me? He said this morning. Ask him. Yes. To smell the breath of the cows, to hear them rustling in the straw, to sleep under your tree. That would be about as close to heaven as I have ever been. away. Everybody gone. To work or play. Just you and me.
She's not. She's such a little silly. Wait, Gunda! She's afraid. She climbed over yesterday. Wait for me! Kazaya, you can use my big bucket if you come with me. Could I? No, I... Kazaya! She is too small. You're as silly as her! It's all right, darling. I'm coming. I did try. I know you did, but you need your other foot over. This one? No, silly, that one. Where do I put it? Here. Right down there. It's not far. You can. Here, I'll lift you. No, me. I'm doing it. Come on! doesn't smell so much today, does he? The salt cleans him. Rags, what? Shall I show them what I found yesterday? They tell. I'd make them promise first. Promise you won't tell. Say, cross my heart, straight dinkum. Father doesn't like us saying that. He says it's common. Ah, oh, say it, or I won't show you. Cross my heart, straight dinkum. Right. Turn round. Don't look. Shut your eyes. Keep still. Right. Now! It's a memory. Is it? Yes. It's the biggest ever found. It's as big as a star. Lovely. It's glass. It's not. It's a real nemeral. Our Auntie Belle's got a real one. Not as big as that. Want your lunch, ma'am? No, Alice. But he does. So greedy. Draining me dry. Is there anything you need, ma'am? No, Alice. Just rest. Mother love us, Grandma. Of course she does. Not like you do. Oh, that's different. I haven't borne you. Does having children make you tired? Sometimes. Has having us made Mother tired? Oh, a little, I expect. Go to sleep. And no more questions. Hmm? It's our rest time. Hmm? 
We saw an emerald on the beach this morning. Did you? Oh, I shouldn't have told you. I swore I wouldn't. I crossed my heart. Will I die now, now I've told you? I don't expect you will, darling. Not if I keep your secret. Can you? It was so beautiful, I had to tell you. Of course you did. Your secret is safe with me, darling. Safer safe? Safer. That's not a real smile. That's just wind from being greedy. That may be a real smile now, but it's no use doing it at me. I don't like babies. I never have. You don't believe me, do you? Just like your father. He doesn't believe me either. What are you thinking about, Grandma? I was thinking of your Uncle William. My Australian Uncle William? Yes, of course. The one I never saw? That was the one. What happened to him? I've told you a dozen times, darling, what happened to Uncle William. Tell me again. Well, he went to the mines and he got sunstroke. Down in a mine? When he came up one day. He just fell over by a big black hole. Not quite. Why did Uncle William have to die? It just happened, Gaziah. 18, 21, 24. Does everybody really have to die? Everybody. Even my new brother? Sooner or later, darling. Even me? Someday, my darling. But you said I wouldn't. Not yet, I said. But what if I just won't? We're not asked, Gazelle. It happens to us all. So confident. Is it because you're a boy? What, my pet? You're not to die. I've decided. Oh, Kaziah. <laughs> Don't let's talk about it. But you're not to. I've made up my mind. You could never leave me. You couldn't not be there. Promise me you'll never do it. Please promise. Say never. You must! Oh, mind my knitting, child. Say never or I'll tickle you. <laughs> you bad Say sin. never. You are. You're... Say never. <laughs> Say never. <laughs> Say never. <laughs> oh, you wild phony. <laughs> oh, oh, that's enough, my squirrel. <laughs> no, 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 no more. Off you get now. Pick up my knitting. Oh, it's time we saw about getting some tea for your mother. Here to await thy liege, Lord Uxor Officinalis. You are absurd, Jonathan. Stand 
Stanley never gets back till seven. Then my troubadour can sport the knots. Where are the other noble dames? Mother's giving the boy his bath. Bell's in her room, I suppose. Hast thou no pity on thy fair sister? Admittedly, her nose is more snub than thine. Thine is perfect. Hers is human. Beryl's hair is not her best feature. She plaits it like a snake of burnished gold. And yet she yearns to loosen it, to have it loosed about her shoulders, does she not? I've no idea, Johnson. Well, thou hast thy lord, she has none. Long she not for a lover. Someone who can find the Beryl none of us can ever know. Yet how can she find such a one? Remove it out here, far from all masculine concourse, by her fell brother-in-law. Beryl and Stanley play cribbage after dinner. <laughs> Linda, Linda, thou art merciless. Have you come to borrow something? A little love, a little kindness, and to fetch me two scallywags home. It's an insect. But I do want to be a bee frightfully. In this game, there are only animals. An insect must be an animal. It makes a noise. It's not like a fish. I'm a bull. <laughs> it's only Cousin Pip. I'll be a sheep. A whole lot of sheep went past this morning. Bah! 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 You can't be a sheep. I'm a sheep. Can't I be a lamb? Ah. No, I was a sheep first. What can I be? What can I be? It'll have to be something very easy, or she'll forget. I won't. Be a donkey, Lottie. Eeyaw! You can't forget that. Eeyaw! When do I have to say it? No, oh, I'll explain. Of the cards. I turn this one up and it's got two spots on it. See? No, Lottie, you mustn't look first. You must put the card down, then if it's the same, you take the pile. But everybody see the same time as me. That's a game, darling. What am I? I've forgotten. And so you go back to the office on Monday, do you, Jonathan? On Monday, the cage door opens and clangs to upon the victim for another 11 months and weeks. It must be awful. Would you have me laugh, then, sister-in-law? Would you have me weep? I suppose one gets used to it. One gets used to anything. Does one? Hmm, I wonder how it's done. I've never managed it. I've never got used to the office. Never. Stanley doesn't seem to mind. Well, one, th thy liege lord earneth double the doubloons that I do. Not that I grudge him if it keeps you in frills and furbelows. Of course, Stan is in his own business. That makes a difference. Yeah. To me, it seems just as imbecile, just as infernal to have to go to the office on Monday as it always has done and always will do. To spend all the best years of one's life sitting on a stool from nine to five, scratching in somebody's ledger. It's a queer use to make it once. One and only life, isn't it? Or do I fondly dream? Tell me, what is the difference between my life and that of an ordinary prisoner? That you chose it? Ah, ah, thou art cruel. But thou speakest sooth. Yes, I put myself in jail, and nobody's ever going to let me out. I was going to be a musician, I was going to be a writer, but I put myself in an office. Uh, that's a more intolerable situation than the other. If I'd been pushed in against my will, kicking even, once the door was locked, or oh, at any rate in five years or so, I might have accepted the fact. 
began to take an interest in the flight of flies, or counting the warder's steps along the passage with particular attention to variations of tread and so on. But as it is, I'm like an insect that's flown into a room of its own accord. I dash against the windows, flop against the ceiling, do anything on God's earth, in fact, except fly out again. And all the while I'm thinking like that moth or that butterfly, whatever it is, the shortness of life, the shortness of life of only one night or one day, and there's this vast, dangerous garden waiting out there, undiscovered. Unexplored. But if you feel like that, why don't you... Ah, there you have me. Why, why indeed, why don't I fly out again? There's the window or the door, not hopelessly shut, is it? Why, why don't I find it and be off? Well, I've got the two boys to provide for, but after all, they're boys. I could cut off to sea or get a job up country or... <laughs> we... Weak. Weak. No stamina. No anchor. No uh, guiding principle, let us call it. Oh, Jehovah, whose eyes upon me ever watchful, never weary. But you're coming. The whole earth will shake into one ruined graveyard. Cold, bright angels will drive us this way and that, and we shall have no time to explain what could be explained so simply. Three stools, three desks, three ink pots, and a wire blind was my life, Lord. Is it too late? Even now? I'm old. I'm old. Grey hairs. I've never noticed before. Heaven reward thy sweet patience, lady mine, for to have listened to my moan. and spiders don't drop from the ceiling. Yes, they do. Ones as big as saucers, with long hairs on them like gooseberries. Somebody ought to come and call us. Ah! What is it? A face! A face! Lookie! Grandma! Mother! Somebody! Such a record. Ooh, what we will be. You said you'd be at the lodge to open the gate. I was doing the carnations. Carnations? Straight dingham, no joke. I was. It's my job, not much compared to the others, but... Bogey, you look so healthy. It's lovely. And you look... Never what? Never seen her. You're not so close. What? Transmuted. You must see my room first. It's big enough for both of us. Then I'll show you round all round. Drawing of you in pride of place. 
But not the photo. The drawing was so unfair on it. It's simply <laughs> pale beside it. Oh, my darling, how I've longed for this moment. Do you begin to understand now why I had to disentangle myself from our love oh, by coming here? Wait a moment. You haven't given me a minute. I know. I do <laughs> rush at everything. I'm sorry, my darling. But the Institute has helped me so much, so unbelievably. I've been able to make a clean sweep of all my fears. I'm not sick and frightened anymore. I've come out of the dark, Bogey. I was so frightened when I came here, as I think you were for me. The doctrines do seem so cranky, and yet they do work. At least they have for me. And I was so afraid I'd lose you, so afraid. It was the life of the head, this fearful intellectualness at the expense of all the rest of us that got us, me, into such horror. But now I know there can be a balance between emotion, mind, and body. You sound almost like Lawrence. Oh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he'd love it here, if his pride would let him. Wouldn't it? No, because nobody here is any more important than anybody else. That would be terrible for him. <laughs> but your chest, your, your lungs... I pay them no attention anymore. I ignore them. But you do see the doctor regularly. There are three. I go to Dr. Young once a week. And what does he say? All the normal things. But the difference is, darling, that here I make the effort to do things, which I didn't before. How much longer do you think you'll stay here? I mean, you said until the spring in one of your letters. Well, perhaps soon. I'm not quite absolutely sure, but... The feeling's been growing that I've gained nearly all I can from good chief. That soon I can spread my wings again. Do you want that? More than all the world. Then I shall spread them. I'll fly back to my bogey and we'll get a cottage in England. And I want you to grow things and we'll have animals and we'll be poor again. <laughs> well, we've only just stopped being... No, I mean poor in imagination. In ideas, in impulses, in wishes. Oh, don't look so shocked. <laughs> we must be simple. We must get rid of this immense collection our minds are crammed with and get back to our real needs. Do I sound banal? Very. But you look... Oh, my love. It's like a miracle. It is. It's all goes teaching me Russian. Ah. <laughs> Is she a good pupil? Very. <laughs> This part this must be gold. Mm. Have we got any gold? No, I'll ask Mr. Saltzman for some.
I'm tired. I'm going to go up to our room. Do you want to stay? No, no, I'm coming. Oh, tell me, pretty maiden, are there any more at home? <laughs> <laughs> Wig. What is it? <coughs> Wig. God. I can't believe. Wig. <coughs> I'm too drunk and die. Wig. I get a doctor. Doctor. <coughs> doctor. <coughs> doctor. It's my wife. My. is dead. Not to notice. I've never been out so late. Haven't you? That's moving house for you. Where are we now? Getting there. Getting there. for you. They're not friends. They're family. Rags has got a ram. He has to feed it with an enamel teapot with a glove over the spout. He's going to show us. They've got a dog too, but he smells. Tell the ram when he gets older. Will he? Ram's going to touch ripe later on. Picton boat right out there. Where's it going? Picton. Tired? No, not an atom bit. Not far off now.
found your way in the dark. Perfectly well. <laughs> Kasaya, can I trust you to carry the lamp? Yes, my grandma. Those the children. Well, put down the lamp, Kizaya, or we shall have the house on fire before we're out of packing cases. Ah, more tea, Stanley. Well, you might just give me five eighths of a cup. These are tip top chops. Well, Kizaya, how do you like waiting at the old house? There simply wasn't an inch of room left in the buggy. Not an inch. That's why you had to wait for the drag. I had a whole chop for my supper. And was the sauce. Didn't I, Father? Oh, don't boast, Isabel. I wasn't boasting, was I, Mummy? I thought they would like to know. That's enough, Isabel. What a pickle, eh? How long do you think it'll take us to get cleared up, eh, Beryl? A couple of weeks. Good heavens, no. The worst is over. The servant girl and I have simply slaved all day. We didn't sit down for a moment. I don't suppose you expected me to rush away from the office and uh, nail carpets, did you? No. No, certainly not. I mean, what the hell does she expect us to do? Sit down and fan herself with a palm leaf while I have a gang of professionals in to do the job? I joke if what sister-in-law can't do a hand's turn occasionally Isn't without very shouting. Hard as slippers are in that hold all over their marked urgent necessities. Do get them. Then you'll feel better. I didn't expect to see these for at least a month. There. You see? Do you think you're going to like it? I'm sure I will. If you do. I don't want to tell you, but I think I ought to, Mother. Kasaya's drinking tea out of Aunt Beryl's cup. She can. We're all topsy-turvy. Do we have beds to sleep in, in this house? <laughs> you shall, you shall. And in the morning, how you can explore. I'll say good night. Good night. Good night.
wonder if it's steep enough. Soon see. I'll do that again, when the world stops spinning. <laughs> 